Oh, didn't see you there. Sorry, just catching up on some reading. This is uh, a rare early edition. This is this is such a rare edition. It doesn't contain any words. Uh, only guns. Hi guys, Jonathan here. I hope you enjoyed that that little opener there. This is not the start of this episode, um, but it is a, a beautiful Renaissance grade baby Browning. So it's the same type of pistol that we're going to show most of in this video. So Renaissance grade is uh, for FN Herstal in Belgium. Worked with John Browning on um, this new pocket pistol. Um, nicknamed the baby. Confusingly, the 1905 model vest pocket pistol was nicknamed the baby. So they kind of borrowed the name of the previous gun as the official name of the next of its replacement. So that does that can get a bit confusing. I'll show you a 1905 in a moment just so that we can tell the difference. But so Renaissance grade is overall foliate <laughs> decoration in the traditional Belgian style. Um, it, those of you who've heard Renaissance grade in a Browning context are probably thinking Browning high power. Um, Colonel Gaddafi famously had a Renaissance grade gold plated uh, Browning high power, GP35, HP35, whatever you want to call it. But actually the term doesn't refer to the finish, it refers to the engraving. So these, these book edition baby Brownings with that fake book title, real pages, uh, they're incredibly cool. Um, could almost have done an episode just on this beautiful piece here. But that's not what, not what we're here for. We're here for this truly spectacular piece of art. And you can debate what constitutes art in the context of firearms. People find it easy to, I think, I hope, um, get their heads around vintage, really vintage antique firearms, you know, medieval period. Well, they not, tend not to be too decorated in the medieval period, but certainly Renaissance, the actual Renaissance era onwards. When we start to get to cartridge firing arms, um, I think people start to, some people will check out. Or it, not, not, they won't be uninterested in firearms, but their interest will pivot to, say, engineering, or the history of, of the invention, or the design, or the manufacture, or the use. And it stops becoming a, a or it becomes a much more debatable piece of art. You know, a, a conventional Browning High Power, a 1911, an AR-15. Um, I, th I think they're pieces of design the debate over whether they're art or not, well, up to you. But this, is, this I think, is unequivocal. This is literally Art Deco, 1930s. And it is uh, a peacock bluing. But it's, the way it's done is it, it's, not only is it sort of iridescent, uh, like, a, like a peacock's feathers, that's the nickname of the, of the bluing, it's almost it sort of comes and goes as you look at it because of the engraving. So, th so there's overall engraving, but it's in panels divided by actual gold lines. So on this side, it's like a sunburst. Well, both sides, actually, it's a sunburst, but the ejection port covers the right-hand side. You just have the sun's rays, as it were, on the side I'm looking at. That's the full sort of sunburst design. And of course, you'll see the same art style in buildings, books, um, it's just, it's, it's the style um, of the era. So we almost don't care about the technical, technical side of this thing, and we're going to show you, um, or are showing you, lots of beauty shots. Um, but we will briefly explain the, the, the reasons why and the, and the um, practical aspects as well of the, of the type. But this is, the, this is our style. Now, we've noticed recently that a lot of you watching these videos aren't subscribed. So please, um, I know it's a bit of an old trope, but please do <laughs> hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because if you're enjoying what I'm showing you now, um, there's definitely more to come. And there's more that we've already recorded as well that you can go back and, and watch. So please do that. Now, both of these engraved guns that I've shown you, um, they still have to have the important bits of information on there. So they are left undecorated. It's all <laughs> Almost a surprise that they didn't just do, do away with the self-promotion there and literally just fill it full of more beautiful decoration. But they've decided to go with just a panel of that, um, I think it'd be a nighter blue, the peacock blue, with Fabrique, na uh, Fabrique Nationale, Dame de Guerre, Erstal, Belgique, Browning's patent, Deposé. So this is a reference to John Moses Browning, of course, probably the world's 
um, most successful and perhaps the most famous overall firearms designer inventor. Uh, the FN partnership with Browning is is pretty pretty well documented. That later on the the his name became a brand within the FN company and was mainly used for the Browning high power for obvious reasons. Um, so we'll just try and show you a bit more detail here. On the back we've got even the back here around the cocking indicator is comprised of more panels of engraving, bluing, edged in gold. This safety lever that protrudes through the grip is a these are completely standard, completely standard baby browning other than the engraving and the serial number five. So this is probably the fifth ever baby browning. I someone can disprove that. Um, or it's a subset of serial numbered highly decorated guns. We my colleague Lisa researched this and um, the best she could she could find or, or sort of presume really is that the very first guns would have been selected, or the very first guns to survive being made and, and, and test fired at least. The final bit of decoration is, or are, the mother of pearl grips either side, with uh, almost letting the side down a little bit in a way, um, because they're, I hate to criticise, but it's ever so slightly crude compared to the rest of it. Uh, but but will be original to the gun, and it's just a version of FN, the FN monogram. So we don't we don't know who owned it, we don't know who bought it, we don't know if it was a gift, we don't even know who engraved it. The most famous FN engraver was Felix Funken, and it's either him, maybe he's so famous he doesn't feel the need to sign this piece of work, or it'd be someone working under him. But I'd expect them to have a tiny little. Mind you, there isn't much real estate on this tiny little gun, so maybe whoever it was was told, no, you will leave your, your name or your initials off this gun. But nowhere on here is uh, an indication of the maker. They've had to leave a little, little panels for the proof marks as well, standard Belgian proof marks there. And that is about it. There isn't much to cover on this um, incredible piece of almost jewellery, really. Now, on the practical side, I'll bring the other one out. This is a 6.35 millimeter, so very small caliber, self-defense weapon. So it's compromised between firepower and size and weight as well. Obviously, firearms made of all steel at this time. Uh, this has these nice walnut grips on it. A little bit, a little bit too small almost to, to for those of us with with larger hands. But you can you can get your your middle finger and thumb around it, and enough of a purchase. Not much recoil from 6.35. And you have a, a heel magazine release that you pull back, sometimes called typical European style, because um, basically everything from the 1911 onwards was, um, well, before that actually, is the thumb button that we're so used to now. But back in these days, there was no suggestion you'd be doing any reloading with something like this. You'd fire your handful of shots and you would either win or you'd run away or you'd get shot and die. So you press the catch, you pull out the magazine, Tiny, tiny little magazine. It's almost like a, a miniature 1911 magazine because it's single stack. And then actually operating it is obviously a, a case of pulling back the slide. It's blowback, so there's no locking mechanism. It's just a spring and the weight of the slide. Out of the back there would protrude a little cocking indicator because there is an internal striker here. And when you pull the trigger, that striker flies forward crushes your primer and fires the round. And of course it will then cycle. And the only other thing really is the safety, which I've showed you before. So we have a long lever protruding through the grip. And that is safe. So there's an S engraved on this one. Not on the Art Deco version. You're expected to just figure that out for yourself and then Logically enough, swipe it down to fire. So it's relatively quick to get into to action for a, a firearm of the period. We have an external extractor, standard browning stuff. So I mentioned the 1905 model vest pocket, as it's often called, uh, browning pistol, confusingly nicknamed the baby. That's this. And I think you can see right away, it's substantially chunkier than the true baby, as it were, which received 
baby as its, as its formal name. In fact, neither of these guys have it, but you will see baby Brownings with literally the name baby in an oval cartouche on the grips. So it's definitively the name of the, of the 1931 model. Um, and by the way, our Art Deco piece being serial number five has to be 1931. So this is the 1930s version of this Edwardian pistol. And again, if I show you the, the width of these, or the thickness, this thing, although it's small, it's substantially heavier than this. It's significantly, na well, it's slightly narrower, but every little counts when you're trying to conceal something in a vest pocket. If you're a, a lady carrying it in a, in a handbag or a purse, not so much of a problem, but for a gentleman, this gives you a significant advantage and the same capabilities. So why not go from this to this? The safety is better as well. So that swipe safety that I've showed you, going back in time, the 1905 has a much more fiddly manual safety here that you have to really kind of manhandle to, to operate, and a grip safety like the 1911, which really requires quite a firm grip to activate to then be able to pull the trigger. That's it cocked. That's it not firing. Manual safety off. Grip safety depressed, and that's it, firing. Whereas with the, the true baby, swipe off your safety, or if you're really reckless, leave it off, <laughs> and then just pull the trigger. So that's, that's the confusion. If you've ever wondered the difference between the, the 1905 and the 1930s version, the 1905 model, the baby browning, there they are. Uh, oh, another, <laughs> another recognition, well, two recognition factors. Shape of the trigger guard. There's this undercut on the baby. Don't get that on the older gun. Um, this overhang that makes it look a bit like its bigger brothers, the, the Browning 1903 or the, um, or the Colt or something. It has the slide overhanging the frame. The baby has that very modern looking flush, flush fit. I say modern looking, it depends on your point of view, but it's, uh, it's neater. Sights are terrible on both because this is a kind of an instinctual aim, last ditch defense weapon. And in fact, if anything, I'd say the gutter on the top of the 1905 is a better option because you can you can sight down that gutter quickly and acquire a target. The baby has these tiny little baby uh, ordinary pistol sights, which are absolutely minute. So really, you're most likely going to be looking over the top of the gun at the sort of ranges that these things were used at. So there we are. You can see this incredible piece on display as part of our temporary reloaded exhibition here at Leeds at the Royal Armouries. Lots of other decorated firearms to come and see as well. For me, this might be the star of the show. It's just so small and so beautifully decorated. And it's that rare exception of a modern firearm that is indisputably a work of art. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We really do appreciate it. Um, do remember, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And of course, we always appreciate a like click as well goes a long way. Um, and you can come and visit our real life museums if you'd like to do that. We also have, if you'd like to see these videos uh, without advertisements, you can go to or download the app or go to the website History of Weapons and War and a lot of the other um, firearm and military history based YouTube channels are also over there with something extra to offer you, whether that's um, no ads or even extra content in some cases as well. So please do go and check that out, see if it's something you'd like to, to sign up for. But you'll always be able to see um, the videos here for free, of course. See you again next time.